Hello my friends, welcome back to Ink and Fig. My name is Alex and today I'm going to be doing my September TBR. If you remember from a couple of videos back, I said I wasn't going to be doing TBR videos anymore and that seems to have not been received the best. So I'm still going to be doing TBR videos, but I'm not going to be doing them as a Lunar TBR game because frankly that's just not working for me and I'm not reading the books that I want to read and it's discouraging me from reading. So I'm just going to read what I want to read. And in this video, I'm going to show you what I want to read in the month of September. I've got some exciting reads going and I've started one already. So we're just going to jump right into it. I started The Sunbearer Trials by Aidan Thomas. This is my book for the Aurelium Readathon Impling Summoning Challenge. Basically, there are six or seven prompts around this circle and you have to meet all of those prompts in like connections like like you have you have to connect all of those prompts through whatever number of books you want to read to complete the summoning circle and summon your impling i managed to connect all six or seven of those prompts in a single book and that is the sunbearer trials so I'm happy about that because I didn't want to have to read too many books for that situation. And I've been really excited to read this book. Just, ugh, I can't get over the gold detailing on this cover. Like, this is stunning. I read Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas last year, I think. And it was wonderful. Loved that book. The romance was gorgeous. The, uh, the, the, the creepiness of the horror elements were great. Really, really loved it. Uh, and now I finally get to read another one of his books. I missed, I think it's Lost in the Woods. Um, whatever his second book was, I missed that one. So I need to go back and read that. But The Sunbearer Trials is his most recent. And like, the book so far is just as good as this cover. <laughs> like, I can't get over this. It's so pretty. Basically, it is about our main character, who is here on the cover, Teo, and he has been unexpectedly chosen to compete in the Sunbearer Trials. These trials are going to determine who is going to sort of reinvigorate the sunstones in this world uh, to help guard the world against basically the forces of evil. There are three evil gods in this world and we're trying to protect the earth from those, but we need to keep the sunstones going. And Teo gets to compete to be the person to do that. So that's kind of cool. Uh, he is extremely unprepared, did not expect to be doing this with his life at all, and yet fate has intervened as it does for our main characters quite often. And that is where we're at right now. I am 70 pages in, so I'm almost a quarter of the way through. Um, we're still definitely setting things up. We haven't really um, gotten ourselves too terribly deep into the plot, but we've been doing a lot of world building in the first 70 pages. And with the complexity of this world, I definitely think we needed it. So I'm happy about the pacing so far. I like, I like Thomas's style. Like, I really enjoyed Cemetery Boys. I understand that there was some uh, discourse going on about potentially some misogynistic themes, particularly in uh, regard to the uh, women. It Well, wow, misogyny in reference to women, how novel. Yeah, there were some misogynistic complaints about that book, and I can understand where those are coming from, um, but I don't think it came from a place of malice. So... I'm absolutely happy to continue giving him a shot because um, I really like his writing style. I think it's uh, very accessible and extremely readable. So hoping to finish this within the next couple of days because it's really good and I just want to keep reading it uh, to the exclusion of all else. So very good so far. So my next read is also for an Aurelium thing. This is for my next step in the alchemy side quest. Um, if you are playing the alchemy side quest, you'll know that each of the steps in this quest is basically a choose your own adventure thing. And each of the steps you have to fulfill a different reading prompt to move on to basically the next page in this challenge. So easier said than done. I'm on my third prompt, I think. 
and without telling you where I am, the prompt I'm going for is a book from your bottom shelf. Uh, this one just so happens to have been on the bottom shelf of my TBR cart, um, and this is I Want to Die But I Want to Eat Dokboki by Bek Sehi. This book has been endorsed by BTS's RM. I'm not savvy with uh, their real names versus their stage names, so I'm not sure who that is. Uh, it's a member of BTS anyway, and he really seems to like it. Uh, I ended up, I saw this before it even came out, and like, frankly, I was sucked in by the title. I'm not even gonna lie. I don't know what this is. It says hit therapy memoir. So I'm thinking it's some sort of um, self-help book guided by this person's own experiences, which is great. I love that, honestly. That's kind of the vibe of um, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo, which I don't know if this is a controversial take or not. That is one of my favorite books of all time. Come at me, it's fine. Um, so I'm super into that kind of style, so I'm looking forward to seeing what this is all about. I don't know much about it, and I would like to keep it that way. All I know is that I was sucked in by this extremely good title, and I'm gonna read it this month. It's not too long, so I think it's gonna be pretty quick, but I think it's gonna be good. I don't know. Looking forward to a surprise. So the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that one of my shelves is presently empty, and that's because I'm gonna read the book that was on it. Finally on my list is Babel by R.F. Kuang. I know that I am late to the game on this, believe me, I know. I bought this book the day it came out. I was extremely excited about it. I am still extremely excited about it. And I just, again, haven't had the time to get to it because I've been trying to do this TBR game that really hasn't been working out for me because it hasn't been letting me get to some of the books that I actually want to get to, like this one. So I thought, you know, September is here. I'm no longer constrained by the rules of this TBR game. So I'm gonna finally read this book. It's got dark academia themes. It's got linguistic themes. It's got commentary on racism themes, on classism, on accessibility to education and higher academia, which I love all of these topics. So I think this book is gonna be a banger. I don't know much about the actual plot save that there is a young male student uh, who I believe is Chinese who gets brought into a UK university to study magical linguistics, I guess. I really don't know what this is about much outside of that. And taking into account all of those other themes, I think this one's gonna be a winner for me. It's long. So that's a little bit intimidating, and I'm going to try not to be intimidated by it. Um, but we're looking at 548 pages, if I just looked at that correctly. So she's a long one. It's scary, but I can do hard things. And my friend finished this and needs someone to talk to about it. So I'm just going to get it done. Um, I'm just looking at the... Oh. The writing's a little small, but it's fine. I'm not going to panic about it. This is going to be fine. I'm not going to hype myself up. We're just going to get it done, and it's going to be good. I don't know where my copy of this ended up. It's probably in my office somewhere, and I should really figure that out because it's not mine. I borrowed it from my mom. Uh, I don't think... Oh, there it is. Oh, I don't want to get up to get it. It's fine. You all know what the cover looks like. I'll pop it up here if you don't. My fourth book that this is, okay, this is one of those if I have time books, which knowing Babel, I might not have time to get to this and that's fine. But if I do have time to get to this, I plan on reading The Secret History by Donna Tart. I've had this one on my TBR again for years and I haven't gotten to it because the lunar TBR gods have just not been behind me on this. But I would like to get it read because I sort of low-key consider myself a dark academia girly. And this is kind of one of those seminal texts for the genre. I don't know when it was published. I'll throw that up somewhere on the screen so that you can know when it's published. Um, but it's one of those books that everybody talks about 
to the extent that I saw someone getting something signed by Freddie Carter of Six of Crows fame, and he said that The Secret History was one of his favorite books. Now, I'm not typically one of those people that necessarily trusts celebrities to have any better taste in books than your average person, but considering the thoughts that he has shared about Six of Crows, I feel like I understand where his taste comes from and what his, where his perspective is, if that makes sense. So when he says that this is his favorite book, I'm like, okay, if, if this is how he feels about Six of Crows, and if that is how he feels about The Secret History, then I think I can make a connection that this is probably going to be a good book for me personally, because I also felt similarly about Six of Crows, if that makes sense. Basically, I'm saying we had similar thoughts on Six of Crows, so I have a feeling we're going to have similar thoughts on The Secret History. That's what I'm hoping for. Is that optimistic? Maybe. Um, but also, I feel like it's just gonna be a good one to have read because everybody in the Dark Academia sort of subculture talks about this book ad nauseum. Like that one, A Little Life by Hanya Yanag uh, Yanagihara, which I have right here. If We Were Villet, one of my- two of my lights just went out. What? Oh, it's because they got hot. Okay. If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. Like all of these books are sort of the texts to read if you're part of Dark Academia. So I'm just going to add the secret history to my list and then I will feel as though I have done my utmost to catch up on some of the seminal texts in this subculture. So that's where I'm coming at for that. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. Comment down below and tell me what you're planning on reading for September, or if you participated in the Aurelium Readathon, if you're planning on taking a break from this month for reading, because that is also super valid. That's what I did for May. Uh, and I endorse it, honestly. You gotta give yourself a brain break every now and again. Please like this video if you liked it so that other people can come and join the fun. And subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. I've got some very cool stuff in the hopper coming down for your viewing pleasure, and I would love for you to see it and not miss it. And I think that is it for me today. Go ahead and follow me on all my social media at Ink and Fig because I am basically everywhere on that handle. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.